Yes, same. Good afternoon, body of Christ. And the body of Christ said, Amen. Amen. Hope all is well. We're going to start in Acts 3, verse, I say from verse 22. Let's go back to 22. And we're going to try to work our way through Act 4. If we do not make it, oh, it's okay as well. <laughs> Bow our heads or close our eyes or whatever you like to do. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for the cold for winter, so we can appreciate summer. You are a faithful father. Lord, you said that there will be seasons and that it will never stop and it doesn't, Lord. So if we experience the cold now in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds sometimes, we know that the sun will be coming out again, Lord. Thank you for hope, Father, for love, for peace. I ask that you bring us to peace now so we can learn from your word, Lord, so we can take it in, so we could understand and make it our own. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everyone ready? I'm reading out of the, is it the New International Version? Must say. Out of the New International ver Version. Oh, that word. <laughs> now, we were talking about the healing of the crippled man who did this healing, John and Peter, Peter and John. A man crippled from birth because a miracle is complete. When the Lord does something, does a miracle. What is a miracle again? Something that goes against all natural law. Now, if a person is crippled, crippled from birth, he will have weak muscles, weak ankles, weak, everything, this man jumped up and praised the Lord. It was a complete healing. And the beauty of this is where it happened, remember the gate called beautiful? This man was sitting there for years and years and years. Jesus must have passed him a couple of times. But Peter and John passes him, and he says, they say, silver and gold we have not, but what we do have, we give to you. You know, we can get so legalistic when it comes to, to praying for the sick, for laying on of hands. We can get a bit legalistic and stuck in the routine. Like we have to pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we have to do it this way. And then you have to do this. And then you have to do a little dance like this. And then, um, fact is, who here has seen a miracle? The fact is, no healing happens quite the same way. You have to have your ears open to the Holy Spirit at all times. I've seen some churches when they do, since we're on Saturdays now doing the discernment of spirit and the, the gifts of discernment, they have this prayer that gets passed on from person to person and only this specific prayer is used to cast out demons. Now, I can tell you, I don't think that will be successful always, maybe once or twice. 
but not always because <sighs> demons there's different kinds of demons number one number two I am uniquely and perfectly made. My mind works in a certain way. The Lord knows what my, what's going on here. Sure. <sighs> Forgive me for most of those things, Father. <laughs> and then you have also as, as a specific way of thinking. If we have to sit next to each other and think about the same thing and answer on the same thing, the answer will sound different. Because our minds do not work the same. We are uniquely made. And one thing the Lord does not want us to do is to copy each other. Who do we copy? Jesus Christ, always the answer. Jesus Christ, we, we copy him. Everything he did, everything he said, and it's still going to come out in unique ways in each individual. Never going to be the same. So if you've seen a healing, don't try to copy that healing. Do it in your own words. You and the Holy Spirit are supposed to work together. He understands your uniqueness. He understands your doubts and your issues. But we're talking about Peter and John that just went in with such boldness that he grabbed that crippled man by the hand, pulled him up. Said in, and what did he say? I think in Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. That's it. No more. If you look through the Gospels as we did, you'll see every time Jesus said something else, sometimes he said, your sins are forgiven. Sometimes he said, hmm, get up and walk. Do you want to get healed? There was different types of healings. You can't follow script on this. I've got my exact way of healing will be this way. And only this way. And no one can tell me different. No, the Lord will lead you. You just have to be, I, I, that's legalistic, I think. <clears throat> I start wondering when I see someone mm, repeating the same prayer for every single individual he comes in contact with because we've got the gift of knowledge. The Lord gives us secret information so we know exactly what to pray about. It's so good. So now we see this fisherman, Peter, unschooled, uneducated as they thought he was, now preaching up a storm, quoting scriptures, doing all these things, because the presence of the Lord changes people. Once you've got to know Jesus Christ, you change. That's how you know someone knows Jesus Christ. They change. It's not quite the same person that you knew before. So what is he doing? He's speaking to the crowd of who? Jewish people. And he, they, they are now in the porch of Solomon. And the crippled guy is still, he is jumping around, praising the Lord still all around them. This is a miracle. He's not soon going to forget. I think he's going to be afraid to go to sleep. Can you imagine after being crippled from birth, all of a sudden you are healed? I'll, that's, that's why I usually joke and say, Father, my house in heaven, I would like stairs, please. Because I struggle with stairs, with the, with the pins I have in my leg. I would just <laughs> spend a day or two running up and down the stairs, I think, for the first day or two, because I can. <laughs> Something I struggle with now. So what is Peter doing? Peter is speaking to the Jewish people, and he understands his crowd. 
He understands who he's preaching to, so he has to preach in a way they will understand. And that was the beauty about Jesus. Jesus always spoke of things they could understand, the sower and the seed. The crows coming to steal the seeds, the, the hard ground. He, he spoke in parables that they could understand. So now Peter has learned from the best. So verse 22. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own, from, from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from his people. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many as have spoken, has foretold these things. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all people on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Let's stop there. So Moses spoke about a prophet like him. What was Moses' main goal? I know we know the, the stories, Moses in the basket, on the river. And all. Moses was the prophet who took the people out of slavery into the desert and into, well, he couldn't enter the, the promised land, but through the desert to the promised land. That, is, that was what Moses was raised up for by the Lord. And Moses said, there will be a prophet like me. Peter is speaking to the Jewish people because they know these things. They sit in synagogues, they sit in the temple, they hear this. They're all waiting for the Messiah still after what they did. Still waiting for him and didn't even recognize that the Messiah has come. Jesus has been there. Now he's just there in the spirit. But he's there. So he's speaking to them. He's saying, look at the Old Testament. Now you must remember that the, the groups they are speaking to right now is the Pharisees. The Pharisees believe in the five books of Mo, Moses, the Torah and the Tanakh, which is all the prophets. The Sadducees, only the five books of Moses. But all these people are grouped together. It's like denominations, Jewish denominations. He's speaking to all of them because everyone can get something from what he's saying. Moses spoke about it. Me and you, we know the Lord spoke about it to Eve in the garden. He said, from your offspring... Moses spoke about it, Samuel spoke about it, Isaiah, all the prophets spoke about it, David spoke about it. Everyone spoke about this Messiah that will come. He fulfilled, I think, more than 800 prophecies in, in his time on earth. And they still can't recognize it. So Peter's saying, Let's speak to you in a way you can understand. Moses told you he was going to come. The prophets told you. What were you looking for? You missed it. You missed him. He was here. And the best of all, wherever the Lord could have sent the Messiah to be born, he was born there amongst the Jewish people. So he was saying to them first, 
That's what Peter said. They were supposed to follow. They should follow so all the people can be blessed through Abraham, which means every Gentile, every Jew, everyone has now one Messiah, one King, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a privilege it must have been to walk with Jesus. And I would, I would have felt really dumb <laughs> if he walked straight past me and I did not recognize him. Don't you think? I can understand why these people are, but... You know, but... I ate sour grapes this morning because Jesus did part. The Messiah was there, passed by them, did not see him. They did not want to recognize him. They were so used to the normal that they could not see the miraculous, the miracle passing them by. <coughs> it's interesting because we all do that. The Lord does all these little amazing things in our lives every day and we're so used to the normal that we don't see we just don't see maybe a day or two a month later that's why i usually pray father thank you for all the things you do that i know about and don't know about because i don't know about everything there's so much we don't know just like they did not know. So we can't even judge them. Jesus was the final word. What did Jesus say? He said that I did not come for break, for the, uh, to break down the laws. Am I, I'm not saying it correctly, I know. I came to bring the law into fulfillment, the law and the prophets, every word of it. So, Jesus, Moses brought the first law, the law of the covenant. Jesus was the final say. It is finished. Everything was fulfilled. Everything is done now. Absolute, absolutely a righteousness, absolute salvation through the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Final word, always. May it be so in our lives too. Thank you, Lord. You say it's finished, then it is. Uh, Acts 4. Did they turn from their wicked ways yet? No, only a few of them. You remember what John the Baptist was yelling about in the water? He was also yelling about it. Now what happens next? Because he's crying out about their wicked ways, exactly the way John the Baptist was. Repent and be baptized. And he called the Pharisees, you brood of vipers. And he got into trouble and he lost his head. Because mm -hmm. that's what the Great Commission does. It brings persecution. Don't look so serious, it's true. We're going to see, um, verse 4. Let's talk about that first. What's the Great Commission? Can you remember? Matthew 28, verse 19. You go then into all the world, make disciples, baptize them in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them. That is the great commission. That is our job. And this, the great commission, is coming into practice now, remember, I think it was two, Acts 2, verse 38, Peter said, Repent then and be baptized for the remission of sins, 
and receive the Holy Spirit. Nothing has changed. John the Baptist, he was yelling the same thing. Lost his head for it. Now Peter and all the disciples are yelling the same things. And here's where the problem comes in, because there will always be persecution if you speak the truth. So, oh no, it's 2,000 and something years later. There's no more persecution about this. Yes, there is. Go try to tell people that Jesus was 30 years old when he got baptized. You will anger them. They get angry. You shake their nest. Have you ever, maybe at work or at school, they're all called Christians. You ask them, what, do you believe in Jesus? I'm a Christian. Everyone's a Christian. But just whatever your circle is like, just say, oh, you know what? The Lord Jesus is just so good to me. And see the discomfort in the room. Hmm? Oh, you want to get religious now? Ooh. Walking with the Bible under your arm. Oh, my goodness. Oh. One of those people. You're so radical. You just want to mess up the party. It is hard being a child of God, a true child of God. Look, those that call themselves <coughs> Christians and have no intent to follow Jesus will have no persecution. If you're just going through this life, like, I'm a Christian, tra la 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 la. You're not really a Christian. There will be persecution. No, that's not. Yeah, it is. Think about Jesus. Jesus said, they will hate you because they hated me first. He said, blessed are those persecuted for my name's sake. Of course, you are the odd one out. So I don't understand. They're all Christians. No, they're not. I wish I can get this into people because I sometimes stand. The Lord had to tell me a couple of weeks ago. He said, my child, is the language of this world and too hard for you to understand? What is he saying? I was having a couple of to and fro words with some people that's still in the world. And I was confused <laughs> at what they were saying. Like, that is so ridiculous. What? Father, how can these people think this way? I've been in love with Jesus for a very long time. I understand his language and he understands mine. And when someone comes with some ridiculous stuff from the side, what? <laughs> <coughs> and I go into a type of confusion. What are these people thinking? Are they even thinking? Are we doing IQ tests now? Or did that stop? Or do you have to have 30% for street smarts now as well? Or <laughs> what, what is this? I get confused sometimes. Because we forget that we have to operate in the world too. Oops, I'm going into my sermon of this weekend. Turn it around, turn it around. So, persecution started for the disciples right here. Remember I said they were still going to the temples, they were still going to the synagogues. They're still worshipping the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But they're now also worshipping Jesus Christ because there's no other way to God except for Jesus. So they're still worshipping. They're still welcome at Solomon's porch. They are still welcome at the gate called Beautiful. But here, things will start to change. Right now, a miracle just happened in front of their eyes. 
How do you deny that? A lot of people do. They do. They say, oh, no, oh, oh it was a trick of the light. Do, do you know, have you heard these people try to explain the plagues of Egypt? So the water turned into blood, and then a bunch of mosquitoes broke out of the blood, and th they've got this. It's just natural. It wasn't natural. <laughs> it was all miraculous. In my personal Bible study, I'm busy with Moses as he parted the sea. And they said, now there's certain parts in the sea, they say the water does kind of pull away from these places. But we are talking about walls of water next to the Israelites. It doesn't make sense. There's simple explanations for this. This was a miracle. It was above law. Miriam sang, Moses' sister sang this beautiful <clears throat> song that is written. And she says, from the breath of his nostrils, he parted the sea. And I had to sit there for a minute and think, oh, wow. Yeah. Look. Try it. <laughs> you just can't. That is how amazingly so beyond human understanding our God is. And these people witnessed this miracle. It makes me think of the rich man and Lazarus. Do you remember? Lazarus died. He went into the bosom of Abraham, into paradise, and uh, the rich man went to hell, Hades. And he said, please send Lazarus to my brothers. Please send him and tell them about this place. And Abraham said, they won't believe him. They have the prophets. They don't believe them. They don't believe anything. You can witness a miracle with, I've witnessed miracles with people, and I'm freaking out. <gasps> Praise, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. And they're like, what? Some people get scared when they see stuff like that. Uh, there was a woman that caught a picture of an angel. It was the only woman in that church. Uh, her camera work. And this picture spread widely through the church I was in back then. <laughs> and it was just, oh, the angel was beautiful. It was so, so big. And it's clearly an angel. And when you try to show, and you're all excited because... <laughs> I've got proof. <laughs> I've got proof. I want to show people oh, an angel. They would freak out and say, that's the scariest thing they've ever seen. I got so excited. So, wow, Father, those are the angels you sent for me when I'm in trouble? Really? <sighs> Who can mess with me? Who can mess? Huh? I'll go boldly like Peter and John now. Was the angels are here? Mm, you don't mess with me. And they get scared. I don't understand. When you ask them, they say, I'm a Christian. But they don't understand. There's a relationship that has to happen. So for the next, from this moment right now, Acts 4, for the next 300 years, they will be persecuted. The true disciples will be persecuted in the most horrible ways you can think about. This miracle started all of it. It's still going. Don't think it's done. Don't think it's finished. So they were <coughs> beaten, beheaded. Lit on fire, sewn into animal skins and given to wild dogs 
so the dogs would tear them apart alive and eat them. Crucified, boiling in oil. I know there's a lot more. Building into like a brick house situation, closing everything up so they could starve to death. There was terrible things. Oh my goodness, how can they do that to Christians? No, they did that to disciples. Learn the difference. Everyone calls himself a Christian. When you are committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you bow your knee and you say, Father, you are my shepherd, I am but a sheep. That day, that day, blessed are the persecuted. Most of you know. Most of you have family that calls themselves Christians. They don't understand you. I know the word, mm -hmm, but is the word in you? Is it alive? Do you know Jesus? Yeah, I know the word says I don't care. Do you know Jesus? Do you know the Great Commission? How many people have you baptized while you walked on this earth? Are you doing what he said? Are you discipling what are you doing? If you're not, what are you doing? If you are, you will be persecuted. And let's think about it now, because we complain very quickly now. We're a bunch of, I want to say Nancy's. <laughs> we are. Oh my goodness, that person said, um, I walk around with the Bible under my arm and my feelings got hurt now. <gasps> my goodness, they were sewn into animal skins, and thrown to wild dogs. You want to complain because someone hurt your little feelings? We have it good in South Africa. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Don't we? <laughs> Sticks and stones. The fact is, I will, I know who my Lord is, my Savior is. I will work for him and run for him for the rest of my life. There will be persecution. There was persecution. I can tell you a lot of stories. I can. Will I stop? No. If I haven't stopped by now, it's not going to happen soon. Most of you, <laughs> it's not going to happen soon. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Praise his holy name. We see demonic attacks, but we are blessed <laughs> because we can fight them. We know how the Lord taught us. He gave us all authority. We lack nothing. <laughs> but the way these disciples died, after the 300 years, of course, there was... <laughs> The Roman Catholic Church, they did a lot of the rest. Persecution never stopped. You can't say, oh goodness, thank goodness, it was just 300 years now. It wasn't. As we are sitting here, disciples are dying in other countries because of the name of Jesus Christ tonight, right now. It's time to wake up. There will be trouble ahead. We know this. Jesus told us. The fact is, will you lose your faith? Will you keep standing boldly? Will you take persecution? But will you keep the name of Jesus? Will you baptize them in whatever water you can get and then run away? Because that's what they're doing in other countries. Baptizing them, putting them on planes and getting them out of there so they will live to see tomorrow. Don't believe me? Go check it out. Verse 1, Acts 4. The priests... 
And the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Stop right there. Can you remember the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Why is the Sadducees so upset? They just witnessed a miracle. They were deeply disturbed. <laughs> yes, they were. Why? The Great Commission. Jesus Christ. Life after death. Oh my goodness, don't get me started. What did the Sadducees believe? You see, people today believe kind of mm, the same things. It's a highway to heaven, guys. Uh -huh. There's many ways to get there. We can just do whatever we like. There's no such a thing as sin. <gasps> Jesus came and just took all our sin away. And now we can live however we want and we're still going to heaven. And that's the problem. That's not what he said. Open a Bible every now and then. Will do you good. But that's how they live. Oh no, forget about the Bible. That was 2,000 years ago. Horrible. What does the Sadducees believe? Why are they so disturbed? Listen if this sounds like something new because it's not it's really just just continued from there on first of all the sadducees do not believe in life after death i think that's what the atheists believe at this stage you know there's nothing so the sadducees do not believe in that and they are preaching that jesus rose from the dead ridiculous can't be that's the way we believe you will not shake us from our false beliefs they won't say false they believe what they're saying is good and right but it's false jesus was raised from the dead he's alive he's still alive he will always be alive amen the sadducees politically was on the side of the romans the Sadducees and the Romans worked together to do all those horrible things to the disciples. They believed that they were already living in the Messianic era because of the Maccabees. Do you remember what the Maccabees did? They set Israel free. After a pig was slaughtered on the altar, we spoke about that before. They believed that was the messianic era coming in. So they did not believe in a specific messiah. So this was a problem. You understand, their little cage is getting shaken now by Peter and John. And there was a miracle. There was evidence that they don't like this. They do not like this. They will stick with what they said. Now the Pharisees believed in life after death, in angels, in the spiritual realm. The Sadducees knew. Not at all. So while Jesus was walking on this earth, who was his enemies? The Pharisees. But now, the disciples are preaching life after death. It's the Sadducees. I think the Pharisees are a bit quiet now. <clears throat> they believed in what they could see and touch. Sounds uh, familiar. How many times do you get to speak to people and say, I believe in what I can see and touch? Someone once told Marius and I that his heaven was this earth. I thought, oh my goodness, no. Please, Lord, <laughs> help. And if he has to go to hell, he'll do it. Why? Because he never opened the Bible. 
I can promise you that. He does not know what he's talking about. Look around you. Look at how we're dressed tonight. It's cold. <laughs> Why would this be your heaven? Makes no sense. I won't stand for that. No, thank you. So, so now we know who's coming against them. So what does the Sadducees do? Because they politically, with the Romans, they seized Peter and John, verse 3. And because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed and the number of men grew to about 5,000. <laughs> How many people was there? You can just make the calculations. If 5,000 came to believe that day by seeing that miracle, they started to believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Another 5,000 is added. We're talking about thousands now, not one person Proclaiming Christ every two or three weeks. Thousands. And Peter and John are spending the night in jail. And they're still coming. Because their eyes saw something they can't explain. And there are those, and here we are. <laughs> that are blessed, even if we do not see, but we still believe. There are those, these people saw and they believed. How beautiful. But and anyway, they threw them in jail. Couldn't take that nonsense. <laughs> Wouldn't let them speak anymore. Let me tell you that if you speak... I tend to, we tend to focus on the negative things. So let's say you're sitting in a room. Ah, I'm seeing Lenaka the uh, day I met her. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people. There were others. But there was something. She was hungry. She had questions. <laughs> about the word she had questions about jesus and till that day no one could answer the questions she had because she had good questions they all have the same answer <laughs> jesus christ but no one else could answer her. The Pharisees and the Sadducees could not answer her. And yeah, I came along to a bride. And I just didn't fit in anyway, really, because I am a disciple. And she asked questions, and I listened, and I answered. And I wasn't, uh, I was a Peter, I was a fisherman. I didn't go to Bible school. <laughs> I didn't, I just spent enough time with the Lord and his word already that I knew things. And she asked, every question she asked already knew the answer for. And we had such a lovely discussion that night. And we just clicked. And we're friends. Well, there was a little bit of a dry patch there, a year or two. And then, well, we're friends ever since. She got baptized and she gave herself to Jesus. Peter gave himself to Jesus. And it's a friendship that never stopped. Because if we have that one person in common, thank the Lord, he's never going away, he's alive and he will live forever. So that's the friendship. <laughs> and may all of you be our friends. <laughs> like that. <laughs> like Jesus. No? He's just the best, best friend. He keeps friendships going no matter what. Let's read verse 5. The next day, the rulers and elders and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Now listen who was here. Anas, the high priest, was there. And so were Gaiaphas, 
John Alexander and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them by what power or what name did you do this? Does it sound familiar? All the same people, not walking on eggshells yet. Anas, you know, was the father-in-law of Caiaphas. Caiaphas and Anas was directly the cause of the crucifixion. And here they are again. How do you still deny Jesus now? Because you've crucified him. And now his disciples are doing the miracles. Oopsie. It's a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> what are you going to say about that? So it never stopped. They, they thought, we're just going to snuff this little evil out. Do you remember Caiaphas had that dream? And he said, oh, my goodness. Let one person die for the good of many. Let's take the life of Jesus for the good of many. And now he's going to deal with the disciples because it's not over yet. It's never been over. <laughs> it's 2,000 years later. And the children of God is still going strong in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. And we won't stop. This is a win because if only one person turns to Jesus, 5,000 turned that day. If you speak to a crowd and they're all persecuting you, but the seed falls at the right spot and you can turn one person to Jesus, you've won. And we get distracted and the enemy tells us, oh, they hijacked you. Look at what they said. We were sitting around a table with other people and only, one, well, two listened. She listened more than you, but you came later. <laughs> you were crying. Okay. <laughs> the seed fell on good ground so she can continue the work. Every, every small little mustard seed that falls in good ground is good seed. Even if the rest did not make it there. One win. It's okay. We spoke about the 72 that, that followed Jesus, that he sent out two, two to perform miracles. And at the end, at the cross, there was only one. John and the woman. But we don't count him. John was there. That was it. Never for one moment. I'm going to stop there today. Never for one moment. Think that when you speak about Jesus, when you feel that overwhelming sense, the Holy Spirit wants me to say something right now. Do it. Yeah, but I will get persecuted. Yes, you will. <coughs> Blessed are you. But there's one person in the room that needs to hear something. He needs someone's asking for a sign, which they're not allowed to do. We are not allowed to do because we have the Holy Spirit. Someone sitting there thinking about taking their own lives. Someone sitting there wondering, is this mediocre life all there will ever be? Will I just get up in the morning and go to sleep at night and get up in the morning and go to work and go to sleep at night and, uh, until I die? Is this what it's like? And you walk into the room and just give your best Jesus smile. You can muster up today, even if you do not feel like it. And you just give the right person a hug at the right time. And you can just say, Jesus loves you. 
once at least a day to someone. Give one. You have one. Jesus wins if you open your mouth and speak his name, even through persecution. It doesn't matter. I think the question that most people should ask themselves is, do I really love Jesus? Because this is how you will know. There will be people that say, oh, the poor disciples, oh, thank the Lord Christians don't get persecuted anymore. Then you know, oh my goodness, you're okay. Because you don't know how your family will turn against you. You don't know how your friends will turn against you. You do not know what being separated onto God is yet. You will learn. You will learn. Most people, when they come to me for the first time, will say, I don't understand. <laughs> Everyone, it's, it's clear. The word is so clear. Jesus said, but my family says something else. I said, who are you going to follow? I remember when I started Bible school, I spoke to the students about it the other day. When I started, I already had a relationship with Jesus when I started studying. And sometimes there would be things in those books that we were given that was not what Jesus told me. That is not what our Father taught me. And I would go into emotional breakdowns and say, Lord, how can I, with a good heart, write this on an exam sheet? How can I do this? How can I say, oh, this is true if I know it's false? Or this is false when I know it's true? How, how can I do that? You've taught me something else. And the Lord spoke to me many times about it in that, what, three, four years, and said, who are you going to listen to? They've got the books. I gave you the experience. Are you going to believe them? Just because a book says, but I've shown you that my word is true and just and faithful. Go to my word, look to me, and I will show you great many things you cannot even dream of right now. And he did, and he still does. But I have to sift who I will follow every day. Who will you follow? It's easy to say Jesus until the first person starts coming at you. Oh, you think you're so holy. I've heard that so many times now that I've started to wonder if I have a religious spirit. And I've been praying, Lord, if I have a religious spirit, would you remove that from me, please? And would you please tell me if that is what I have? And the Lord will, he's, he asks questions <laughs> so you can answer yourself. Father, do I have a religious spirit? And say, what did they say? Then I'll say, well, they said, they said that, that I think I'm better than them. And they'll say, is it true? Just ask yourself the question, is it true? Nope. I don't think I'm better than anyone. How can one think he's better than someone else if the same spirit of the same God lives in all of us? Aren't we supposed to just love each other? Thank you. Let's stick with that. Yes, amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, it's hard to hear, Lord, because through the Gospels we've built a 
relationship with your disciples, we, as we build a relationship with you. We laughed with Peter. We felt the disappointment when he denied you, Lord. We read through the book of John, the beloved disciple, Father. We got to know them as friends, as you did. And they are thrown in a jail cell because of a miracle, Lord. And Father, people will laugh at us, your children, your disciples, because it hits us really hard. Because we understand persecution. Because we cry when we have to read through the crucifixion. We feel the pain for you, Lord, because we know that that pain you took, Lord, that was our pain. That was our punishment. Father, forgive our unthankful hearts. Because the persecute, persecution we face today is nothing against the persecution your disciples and you faced, Lord. Forgive us, Father, but I also ask, Lord, that you give us the boldness of Peter and John. That you make us strong and courageous to take the mighty name of Jesus to the next generation, to the next person, to the people at work, to our families, Lord. Let us never grow cold in passion when it comes to your beautiful, mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.